Welcome back to the Best Football Show. Uh, I'm your uh, host, Brian Baldinger. I'm here nearly every day. We're a month before the draft. You can find me at Baldy NFL on all the platforms. I'm posting videos and a lot of the players. I just did one on the slot corner of Michigan yesterday, Mike San Ristel. I think he's uh, an elite player at that position. Luke McCaffrey. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, every day I'm looking at different guys, and uh, some of them I put out in video. Anyways, you can find this every day on your free Odyssey app. Download it. Uh, like, subscribe, push that button, tell your friends, heck, tell your enemies about uh, the best football show. I'm here every day. We're a month to the draft. One month from today in Detroit, we're going to get it on. And, uh, and we're going to build up to it. But in the meantime, I really want to kind of take a look at each division. We've taken a look at the AFC West. Everybody looking up at Kansas City. We've taken a look at the AFC North. My choice for being the best division of football. And right now we're in the AFC South, and we have taken a look already at the Houston Texans who've turned things around, winning the division at 10-7, and 7, winning a playoff game last year in Tennessee, who's been a part of two collapses two years in a row. Let's get to the other two teams in the division, Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans, because what this division has been defined by is just complete turnover. General managers, coaches, front office, it's – quarterbacks and so let's get to Indianapolis where Shane Steichen is going to you know go into a second year Chris Ballard the general manager I played for the Colts um you know I know that organization top to bottom as well as any organization in this league because they you know I I have known Jimmy Ursay since the day I went to play for the Colts in 1988 so I always got an eye on the Colts um let's let's face it uh they lost Anthony Richardson in the fourth game of the season last year uh, and a loss to the Rams. They had three overtime games last year. They had an overtime loss to the Rams. Aaron Donald ruined them. Uh, Anthony Richardson went out. Um, you know, we saw Gardner Minshew come in and play great football. You know, seven to six as a starter. They were in a playoff hunt until week 15 or 16. They went to Atlanta and they laid an egg. Um, this team played really well with what they had. Backup quarterback, injuries um, uh, around the team. But they spent a lot of free agency signing their own players. And th there's something to be said about this. Zaire Franklin is an elite player, one of my favorite players in the league. Um, he's led his team in tackles two years in a row, never comes off the field. Um, he played every snap in 2022 for the Colts, played almost every snap last year. But Grover Stewart, who was suspended for six games, came back, run stuffer. Tyquan Lewis, young player, off the edge. Michael Pittman. You only had 109 catches last year, most of them from Gardner Minshew. Kenny Moore, maybe the best slot defender in this league right now. Pro Bowl player, one of my favorite players in the league. They bring in Joe Flacco to be the mentor and the backup um, to Anthony Richardson. So, you know, uh, they bring in Taven Bryan, you know, some other guys. But for the most part, they re-signed their own guys. Um, they lost Zach Moss, but Jonathan Taylor will be there for a full season. Um, you know, so when you look at this team right now and they went, they won nine games with Gardner Minshew, but really this is to me about Anthony Richardson. And I, I remember during the season, I, I talked to Shane Steichen before a game and I, I've known Shane for a while now, he was, you know, offense coordinator in Philly, spent my time talking to him. I really like, him. I like him a lot. I think he really is uh, wired up and he's wired in the right way. Gus Bradley, you know, stays in charge of the defense. They're in good shape with him. But this is about Anthony Richardson. And, okay, coming off a horrendous injury, I think we saw a glimpse, though, last year. You know, he ran for four touchdowns in four games. Um, and maybe that's part of the problem. You know, he just can't just run people over like he did at Florida, you know, and, and take some of the hits that he took in just less than four games last year. But what I did see – was a lot of creativity in offense, a lot of ingenuity. I, I saw a lot of that um, last year. And so I'm anxious to see Anthony Richardson with an offensive line that, you know, looks pretty good to me uh, across the board. You look at, you know, all the things that they have in place right there, you know, at the tackle positions, um, you know, uh, you look at, um, you know, Ryan Kelly, obviously, and, and Quentin Nelson inside. Quentin looks like he's back healthy and becoming 
just the you know star player that he has been since he came in this league. You okay? What what does the Indianapolis Colts need? Um, they need help on defense right now. I think Gus Bradley. They've got the fifteenth pick in the draft. There's going to be a run at some point on cornerback, and they need a corner. Um, Juju Brents was a guy they drafted last year in the second round. Looks like a good player. Nick Cross, young player. I think they need a corner. And so then you go, okay, is it is it Nate Wiggins? Is it Terry and Arnold? Is it Cooper DeGene? Is it Quinion Mitchell from Toledo? Like, I feel like one of those players I mentioned could be there at 15. One, one or more are going to be there at 15. There's going to be a run on quarterbacks, on um, offensive tackles, on wide receivers. One of these corners is going to be there. And I feel like that would be a good a good pick right there. You know, they, they had a good draft last year. Um, Josh Downs at North Carolina. He is what he was at North Carolina. He was a great slot defender or slot receiver. And he was that last year. Um, Blake Freeland, you know, came in and played tackle last year. You know, was a freak athlete at the combine. Looked like that. I think he's just going to get bigger, stronger, and better at offensive tackle. Maybe a swing tackle. You know, so, you know, you look at, um, you know, Freeze and Freeland and, you know, some in, in Braden Smith, like they look pretty good there. And they're going to get, you know, obviously the J train back. I like I like the way the Colts are set up to compete. You know, somehow with what they had on offense last year, they were the number 10 offensive football. And that's a credit, honestly, to Shane Steichen to keep them really reinventing themselves every week. You know, um, and so receiver, I think, is still a position of need. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see the Colts this year with a healthy Anthony Richardson in offseason, four games under his belt last year, a chance to really watch Gardner Minshew, you know, uh, play well. Um, this is a team that could be on the rise. And then there's the Tennessee Titans. And really no team has undergone as much change as they have. And maybe it's good change. I don't know. I was a big fan of Mike Vrabel. I thought he got at the short end of the stick. But look, Rand Carthon is the general manager. Um, Brian Callahan is the new off, you know, new head coach. Somehow he got his dad to come. Bill Callahan, which might be the best coaching hire in all of football. He's as good as any offensive line coach as there is in this league. Jeff Stoutland at the top. You know, there's some great ones. He's as good as anybody. He can stand up in front of the room and you think he's the head coach. He can be your run game coordinator. He could make any adjustment that has to be made. Everywhere Bill Callahan has gone, the offensive line has improved. And let's face it, this offensive line is one of the reasons why Mike Grable isn't there. Derrick Henry isn't there. You know, um, that the changes have been made. I think Skaronsky is, you know, a staple. I think getting Cushenberry from Denver at center can be a staple. They had to upgrade Aaron Brewer. I think Brunskill is still a good player. I'm curious at offensive tackle what they might do. Um, so let's look at what they did. They gave Calvin Ridley a boatload of money. Why? Well, they needed, you know, you don't know. D Hop is, is DeAndre Hopkins, but, you know, what is he at this stage of his career? I feel like, you know, Calvin Ridley, even when Julio Jones in Atlanta became the number one wide receiver because of his route run ability after the catch, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so I, I'm anxious to see how they build around Will Levis. I mentioned the offense line. They've got to get better up front. Um, Okoronko looks like a pretty good pass catching tight end. Um, you know, they bring in a new defense coordinator, Denard Wilson, who has not been a defense coordinator. So I'm anxious to see how that how that goes right now. They made a lot of other changes. Um, this at one time, maybe as early as just two years ago, was the preeminent defensive line in football. It started with Jeffrey Simmons. You know, it was uh, Danico Autry. Um, you know, it was Harold Landry. I mean, they were beasts up front. They were the number one defensive football. Well, they still have Simmons. You know, they still have Landry. You know, I think they have to, you know, they, they went out and got Sebastian Joseph Day to play inside. You know, so those are some 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 things. That you you got to look at edge pass rusher here, you know, and what they might do. 
So let's just look at some of the things that they can do. They have basically jettisoned the secondary for Denard Wilson. I mean, Kevin Byard got traded during the season. Aziz Alshire is gone. Uh, Danique Autry is gone. Sean Murphy Bunting is gone. Um, they've lost corners. So they're picking in the first round with the seventh pick. I mean, you look at any mock draft right now. In a deep, rich offensive tackle draft, they have to get themselves a starting tackle. I don't know if that's J.C. Latham right now. I don't know if that's Joe Alt. I don't know if that's Olu Fashanu. They need a starting offensive tackle. Skaronsky looks good. I knew he'd be a good player. Um, he's got to be around better players. So I feel like at number seven, if they get a stud offensive tackle, they could put this offensive line back together. And all of a sudden, you know, Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, you know, Will Levis can hand off to some of these guys and they could get a running game going, which was dreadful last year. If you remember week 15 last year, Derrick Henry at home, against the Houston Texans, ran 16 times for nine yards. Say no more. But then I think the next week, you know, Tennessee went to Miami on Monday night, and Will Levis was unreal. He was unreal from what the things that he did, his toughness, his ability, his arm talent. Like, it was all on display. He was sensational in that win against the Dolphins. And I think everybody feels like Will Levis can be that guy. I think he's got a – throw the ball with better touch, layer more throws over the middle. Um, but we saw we saw signs on a 6-11 and 11 team last year that, you know, Brable had this team competitive, you know, down a stretch, knocking the Jacksonville Jaguars out of the playoffs. Um, they have a new stadium. Being, when I talk about a division in complete um, transition, there's a new Nissan stadium being built. You know, it's going to be opening, I think, in 2027. So they have that to look forward to. Um, so I think Tennessee, I don't. I, I think the Callahan move and the fact that they have the seventh pick and they got Sadiq Charles and, you know, they drafted Skaronsky and they got Cushenberry. I feel like if they could put that offensive line back together, if Simmons can stay healthy for 17 games, he's such a beast inside. Um, he makes everybody else around him better. But there is losses there. So um, I think Tennessee is on the come. It, it might take a year for the Brian Callahan regime to kick in. But it is a regime. It is a team in transition. It is the team, I believe, looking up at Houston, Jacksonville, and Indianapolis. And maybe they find their stride during the season. But that's a look right here. At the Tennessee Titans, they, you know, they, they do have the second pick, by the way, um, in the in the second round, their second round pick, number 38. You know, how good would it be to see Xavier Worthy, you know, or a Kwame Lazard or somebody like that? They can they need to hit on the first and second picks the way the Houston Texans did last year. And if Will Levis makes a jump and they put the offensive line together, maybe just maybe the Tennessee Titans could be a team competing for a playoff spot the way we saw Houston a year ago. But that's a look at the AFC South. I think it's a division on the rise. I don't think anybody thought that they would be nothing but the um, a doormat division last year. Houston changed that. Uh, and I think I think of these other teams that we've mentioned, Indianapolis, Tennessee, uh, ten, uh, and Jacksonville, all looking up at the Houston Texans, who I believe – are poised to repeat as division winners this year. That's been the best football show. Thanks for joining me. We'll be here, uh, you know, after the holiday this weekend, uh, all week next week. Look forward to uh, coming back and joining you guys and um, a full week of football with draft and division breakdowns and team breakdowns and breaking news, all on the best football show.